Hello, uh, welcome to web, uh, Altibis webcast presentation. This is Daniel Seo. I'm an education consultant in Altibis Corporation. Okay, today we're going to talk about the um, the final part of replication, the optimization and monitoring. Okay, today's replication part five. The last time we talked about replication part four, it was which was about conflict resolution. And today we're going to talk about the um, optimization and monitoring. Okay, we're going to talk about the optimization first. Okay, um, there are some uh, considerations for optimizing Altibis uh, HTTP replication. Um, first of all, let's have a look at the consideration for minimizing the replication gap and uh, improving the TPS. Okay, the replication gap is not found to be a problem, but when it comes to second problem, um, the conflict could occur. Okay. The, so minimizing the gap is important. Okay, um, so we're gonna have a look at how to minimize them through network um, optimization and transaction tuning. Okay. Secondly, there are uh, consideration for uh, um, active active formation type. I said in replication, the X log is sent in a unit record. Therefore, each record is transformed to um, each X log and sent. And while doing that, the partial failure or the partial rollback can be occur. So we're gonna have a look at when this could happen. All right. And in active active formation, there's consideration for lock. Okay. Um, the lock competition is occurred um, due to modifying operation um, from boss node. And worst scenario could be deadlock. Okay. Deadlock. So we're gonna have a look how to solve this kind of issues. Okay, lastly, um, in order to improve the performance, um, we can do this. Uh, we can do the tuning for sender. Okay, send the thread, and we will also gonna talk about this in this section. All right. Okay. First of all, when writing application, you need to know that the update is not available for primary key. The replication is done uh, based on the primary key value. Therefore, that when primary key is modified, then you will have a conflict. Okay. Um, therefore, there will be an error when column that is assigned for primary key is modified from replication. Um, okay. If the uh, database is designed properly, the primary key shouldn't be modified, even though it is an replication table. Okay. So also, so also when writing application, the update should not occur for primary key. Okay. Okay. The reason why. Um, the replication gap occurs is because it is lazy type, okay. Um, but the other reason could be the network, okay. Um, the replication gap can be minimized if network is optimized. We recommend setting the network for replication only, okay. Meaning exclusive line for replication that that is more than one gigabyte, all right, one gigabyte. We also recommend the number of LAN cards uh, as much as the number of uh, replication object, which, which is to improve the performance. Okay, um, when multiple LAN cards are used, the replication objects can be used according to that number. Okay, so the sender of load will be reduced and replication performance will be improved. All right, and number of exclusive LAN cards are recommended in a replication environment so that the failure through multiple IP addresses. Um, are available so that the replication stop will not occur due to network failure. Okay, we also have to check whether we can optimize the network um, from the software aspects. Okay, we have to do we have to check whether there is a parameter that can improve the performance or the efficiency of network from operating system. Also, we have to check um, if there is any network software to be installed additionally. Right. And also, um, when creating replication object, um, it is better to separate the replication object if the order order of the transaction among transaction is not important. Okay. If the order of transaction among uh, replication is not important. Okay. The send the thread. Um, the sends the X log by converting them. Okay, is activated for each replication object. So when multiple replication objects are um, used, the sender thread are also activated with, within the same amount. So the replication performance can be improved. Okay. 
For example, when we're replicating 50 tables and have to add all that into one replication object, then one sender thread has to send all the transaction log of 50 tables after reading all of them. Okay. However, when 50 tables are divided into two replication objects, um, then they are replicated with 25 tables each. Okay. So the amount of log that one sender thread that has to send is reduced by 50%. Okay, so this is how the performance can be improved. Also, creating the replication object by separating the disk, um, separating the disk table and memory table is also recommended okay, to improve the performance. The transaction processing of memory table is faster than disk table. However, if both tables are added in a single replication object, then the performance of memory table can be reduced by disk table. Okay. However, when separating, uh, separating the replication object, the transaction order has to be considered because when transaction order has some uh, more priority, then it is hard to separate replication objects. So we need to think about these kind of issues when separating the replication objects. Okay. It is also um, recommended uh, for tuning. The, the transaction that exceeds the network bandwidth. Okay, um, even though it is not replication, the bulk type of update and uh, delete can reduce the performance. So the bulk DML operations are not recommended. Okay. However, when it's inevitable, it is better to perform separation using limit query. Okay, um, the bulk operation is not recommended because it can not only reduce the performance but also it will increment the replication gap. Okay, also, when um, executing bulk time operation, it is better to execute on both nodes simultaneously, okay, rather than executing on the one node and replicate it. When executing from both nodes, it has to perform by executing none or false in a unit of session. Okay. And also, when there's a task that has to delete the entire table on a regular basis, the truncate is recommended. Okay, um, rather than delete. Okay, from both node. Okay, um, now let's talk about the um, the partial fail and the partial rollback. Okay, partial fail um, literally means the X log that has to be reflected to remote server is failed partially. Okay, so when you look at the diagram, the update is executed on 100 records for C1 equals to 301 to 400. Okay. The hundred of X logs are um, created and sent, but this case is when um, 399 ninth um, X log could not be reflected and fail. Okay, for this case, the partial fail is occurred, but depending on the replication type, it can be partial rollback or entire rollback. Okay, the main reason um, why partial fail occurs is because the conflict and the log timeout. Um, Okay, I already explained about the conflict last time. The conflict is occur when the value of X log and the value of current value of, from remote node is different, or the created time from remote server is more recent than the local. Okay, when this happens, the 399, um, the value is fail. Okay, the modification is possible um, when X log of um, 399 is arrived on remote and granted lock, but there is a failure by lock timeout because the lock couldn't be granted as the master transaction already granted lock first. Okay, so the X lock has to wait. Okay, cannot wait forever. So when the certain time is passed, the X lock is rolled back, and this is how the partial rollback is occur. Okay. Okay, when partial fail is occurred, the result is different depending on the replication type. Okay, when it is the lazy type, um, there is no effect on local server. All right, um, and all of hundred record records are updated. All right, however, from remote server, um, the failed record is recorded into log, and and that uh, particular record is rolled back. Therefore, the value of 399 is reflected in local server, okay, but not in remote. 
Okay. Uh, when eager time is used, the error is occurred when comment is executed from local server. Okay. And reloaded query and error logs are recorded in remote server. Okay. So it is now reflected into both local and remote server, and the rollback is executed as a whole. All right. The partial rollback um, literally means rollbacking partially about the failed record. So this is when modifying data is, is failed from remote server, and that failed record is rolled back even though the data has been successfully modified from the local server. The reason why uh, the partial rollback is used because uh, that's because that's because to prevent entire transaction being rolled back um, even, even though um, some records are reflected. Okay, and this is used when it is only lazy type. Okay, however, if a uh, partial rollback is occur um, too many times, then the data inconsistency between local and remote server will um, become worse. Okay, when this happens, it has to solve the inconsistency uh, manually. Okay. Okay, uh, we talked about replication lock timeout um, regarding a part, um, partial fail. All right. So this time we're going to talk about the situation of lock in a replication environment. Uh, when modifying operation is occur, the lock is granted in a replication environment, just like standalone environment in a unit of record. Okay. However, in a replication environment, um, there are two types of lock. Okay. The first one is when um, replication transaction granted the lock, and the second case is when the master transaction granted the lock. Okay. When you look at the diagram, um, the, from number one, um, the update is executed okay, on this uh, second record. The lock is granted for this uh, for this record, and the X log is sent. Okay, the X log um, has to modify the record. Therefore, the lock is granted from number two. All right. Here in number three, um, the master transaction cannot grant the lock because the replication transaction already granted the locks uh, first. So yes, to wait. Okay. So from one to three, um, this situation is where replication transaction granted the lock first. Okay. The second case is from four to six. Okay. Four to six. Um, this is when the master transaction granted the lock. Okay. On number four, the modification has occurred on the record forty-five. Okay. From server two, um, the the modify X log has to be sent and grant a log on record 45, but um, on number five, when it was arrived on sub one, the master transaction already got the log. Okay, therefore the replication transaction couldn't um, uh, it couldn't grant a log and it has to wait. Okay, for this case, the replication transaction cannot wait forever. Therefore, when a certain time is over, okay, the rollback is executed. Okay, the rollback is executed. This is how the partial fail could occur, like I said previously. Okay, so in a replication environment, um, there are two types of lock that can occur. Now we're gonna see the, which problems can be occurred in which situation. Uh, when you remember the number from this uh, one to one to six from this diagram, and let's talk about more about this in later page. Okay. Okay. If both uh, situation of lock lasts way too long, um, the result will be different. Okay, first of all, when replication transaction granted lock, um, first, which is from number one to three, then number three has to wait for granted lock. Okay, but this is found to be normal. Okay. It is normal case, the number one has occurred first, uh, therefore the replication transaction um, granted the log first and the number three reflected. Okay. Therefore, in terms of data consistency from both servers, it is not a uh, it is not a problem. Okay. However, when master transaction granted the log first, okay, um, this could be problem. The replication transaction has to wait. Okay. Because it could not grant the log, so the partial fail is occur, or the entire rollback is occur. Okay. When using lazy type, um, because it is async, okay, even though the replication transaction could not grant the log, it is reflected to server two number four. However, it is not reflected to server one. Therefore, the replication gap became worse, 
and as a result, the data consistency gets worse. Okay. If eager type is used um, when it is executed from numbers on server two, the number four, and commit is executed, then it has to wait uh, until replication transaction grants the log, and it also has to wait until it is reflected to server one. Okay, so then the session has to wait for that as well. So like a hang. Okay, so to solve this kind of issue, the timeout for application transaction is configured. Okay, the replication lock timeout is the time for that wait for lock to be granted by replication transaction. All right, um, the replication could not grant the lock. That doesn't mean it should wait forever. Okay, therefore we set the time, um, and when it when it reach the time. Uh, the replication transaction is rolled back. Okay, as the lock time out is set, the infinite time of waiting for entire transaction is prevented. Okay, as a default, it is a five seconds. Um, so if the tra replication transaction could not grant a lock within this time, it is rolled back. And once it is rolled back, um, it can either roll back as a whole or partially. Therefore, it is better to um, configure the timeout value as appropriate as possible. Okay. If the timeout value is too big, um, then replication will be stopped for a long time, which will become worse. Okay. If the number is too small, and then the data consistency will be occur as a lock timeout. Um, okay. So it needs to be configured very, very um, conf uh, carefully. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the dead log in a um, replication, which is the last part of the log. Remember I said in architecture session, um, the alter base is configured to avoid the dead log. However, that case was for standalone, and dead log can be occurred in a replication environment. Okay, because the dead log that is occurred from replication environment cannot be detected as it is in, uh, in a network environment, okay? When you look at the diagram, um, the, the transactions are executing from both servers, okay? There are two update statements, okay? Uh, from the left-hand side is one transaction, and the other two update statements, okay, are also one transaction, okay? So this means the transaction is finished when uh, both uh, update statements are executed. Okay, from number one, um, the update is executed on the second record. Okay, um, from the local server, the log is granted, and once the data is modified, the X log is sent. And is number two, the replication transaction that granted the log from the second record from the remote server. In number three, um, the remote server modified the forty-fifth. Um, record and send the X log, and once the log is granted, okay, and number four, the replication transaction to granted the log, and in order to modify the 45th uh, the record, okay. The number five, okay, from the remote server, it tries to update the second record where the log is granted, already granted by replication transaction, okay. So it has to wait. And number six, uh, the local server tries to um, uh, grant the log before updating the 45th record, um, but the log is already um, granted okay, by the remote server, so it has to wait. Okay, This one, it has to wait. So as you can see, both number two and number four, uh, the replicate transaction grant the log, and master transactions are waiting for it. Okay, the problem is the number five and number six uh, has to be have to be ex executed so that the entire transaction uh, will be um, finished, and the other statement will also be handled. Um, but in this situation, both five and six cannot be executed. Okay, the replication lock timeout is present, but this property is for only when replication transaction cannot go into lock. But now um, they already have lock. Okay, number two, number four, they the replication transaction already have lock, so this property D, the replication lock timeout property cannot be applied. So this situation is called deadlock situation. 
Um, so deadlock cannot be detected because the lock is occurred from the network environment. Then how are we going to solve this problem? There's one property for this uh, kind of situation. Um, this property is not directly related to replication, but when transaction does not finish, then this transaction is rolled back. Okay, we call this U-Trans timeout property. When transaction is timed out, then it is rolled back, so that law can be released. Okay, for example, when a transaction executed from the local server is rolled back by timeout, then the lock was granted by number two, um, is released, and the transaction that was waiting for um, the second record to be released, the number five, can be executed. Okay, so the transaction from remote server um, can be finished as normal. Okay, we talked about this. Uh, before that uh, when writing application the lock competition has to be considered in active active formation okay okay let's talk about the replication standard tuning all right uh, which you can also improve the replication performance all right um, I said in replication the sender thread reads the log uh, read the log and converts into X log all right uh, however, we didn't talk about where the sender thread reads the log from. Okay, so there might be some people who think the sender thread um, reads the read the log from the read the log file. Okay, in the desk, but reading a physical file is the final alternative. Okay, in an architect in uh, in a architecture session, I said there's a low buffer in memory uh, where. Um, Read the log is recorded. All right. Okay, so uh, however, apart from this, um, there's also a thing called replication log buffer. Okay. So there's two two buffer, read log buffer, and replication log read log buffer. Okay, when transaction is executed, um, it record uh, it records the log into memory. Here, uh, here the log is recorded into read log buffer and replication log buffer simultaneously. This is why the sender reads the log from the replication log buffer and converts into X log. Okay. However, the default size of replication log buffer is not that big. So when the speed of reading reading a log by sender thread is so slower than the speed of uh, writing into the log, then the upcoming log will override the, the, um, the existing log which is not read by sender. Okay. When the log contents are overwritten, then the log cannot cannot be read by um, sender thread. So the sender thread then refers to the replication log buffer um, to read um, to read the um, the log that was previous uh, previously overwritten by. Okay. Basically, the size of read log buffer this one is bigger than the replication log buffer. Okay. So you can read on read log, but the size of the read log buffer is um, also limited, so there could be a case where sender thread um, can, could not read the log. Then finally, the sender thread read the log from the physical log file um, in a disk, so it converts into X log. Okay. It reads the physical log file as a final method, so the log that is not replicated cannot be deleted, even though the checkpoint is executed, as there is no log that can be read by. So when sender thread uh, reads the log from the disk, uh, then of course the performance will be reduced. Okay? Therefore, in terms of performance, we need to enable sender thread um, to enable sender thread to read the log from the uh, memory by increasing the size of read the log buffer. Okay. Okay. The default value is. Um, the default value is 30 megabytes. Okay, so it is better to uh, increment within the size of 4 gigabytes. Okay, by checking the spare space of memory. If you cannot increment the size of replication log buffer as there is no uh, enough space in memory, then we can set multiple files, um, multiple log files to read. This will allow uh, send the thread to read the log file in advance and convert it into X log so the performance will be improved. Okay. However, it reads from the disk so the performance will be slower than uh, incrementing the size of replication log buffer. Okay. So far, uh, so we talked about the replication optimization.
Okay. Let's talk about the monitoring now. Okay. So we know whether it's causing any problem or any replication gap um, or any conflicts. We know this by so-called monitoring. Okay. Um, so we will talk about what kind of replication information we can check through monitoring. First of all, the monitoring is classified by internal, external, and trace log monitoring. Okay. The internal um, monitoring is the meta table, the performance view, uh, which is provided by uh, database. Okay. So it means it monitors the replication status using dictionary and um, external uh, monitoring is the monitoring from the OS level using OS commands. Okay. The trace log monitoring um, is the one of the monitoring types that is used to find out the cause and the solution when there are replication failures uh, and replication conflict. Okay. Then how are you going to do this monitoring? Okay. You can do uh, monitoring by directly typing the SQL um, commands or the OS command from the terminal. Okay, you can type the monitoring um, categories uh, as a script and use the utilities such as Altimon. Okay, the Altimon is a utility that is uh, a script base which is defined by user, okay, which is similar to the audit. Okay, other than that, there's also a utility uh, called Replication Manager, uh, which you can easily monitor from the GUI environment. Okay, then let's talk about the, uh, the monitoring categories in detail. Okay, for internal uh, monitoring, you can check things like replication gap, um, the sender thread, um, sender and receiver thread. The replication gap is very, very important part. So you can do monitoring by performance view. Okay, you can monitor how much gap are there between local and remote. It is whether it's increasing or decreasing, something like that. And you can um, uh, monitor the sender and receiver thread, so you can check whether the replication is activating the location of X log uh, that the sender thread has sent. Okay, whether the receiver thread has the X log or not. If not, where is it now? Or well, those kind of things can be checked. Okay, for the external uh, categories, you can use the OS command, or you can you can check the status of network, um, and you can also check the available log file system space because the log file might not be deleted because of the replication. Okay. Also, the replication cannot be activated if alter base uh, is not activated properly. Okay. So you can check through. Uh, you can check. You can check like uh, ps uh, dash ef command to see whether alter base is currently operating normally. When checking the trace log file, um, you can check the file called alter base uh, uh, underscore lp log. Okay, this file contains the information of all the error messages related to replication environment. All right, um, you can check things like what kind of conflict has occurred and then once the replication started and ended. Okay, those kind of things. Okay, you can also check things like uh, check through a table called VTOLA statement and VTOLA session. Okay, um, these. These views are not directly related to replication, but it is useful to find out the bulk time operation, which is critical to the replication performance. Okay. Okay. There are about 20 tables uh, related to replication, we, but we'll have a look at the uh, three main tables that we will be used mostly. Okay. First of all, from the table sys replication, um, here you can check all the information related to the replication object. We can check the name of the replication um, object that is created and which replication object is started and stopped, something like that. Um, okay. The XSN means this one uh, means the uh, the restart is sent. Okay that where the sender thread will send the X log while transferring the X log. Okay, the information such as uh, which X log is received, is sent, are recorded into the meta table. So when replication restarted, it is synchronized uh, automatically. Okay. The item count is the number of replication tables. So let's suppose there are 10 tables that are replicated, then the count value is also expressed as 10. Okay. The uh, conflict resolution Part shows what kind of conflict method that is currently on. 
Okay. So I said there are three conflict resolution, and you can check which type of use, uh, which type is used out of those uh, three types. The replication mode um, is a column that checks the replication type, whether it's lazy or eager. Okay, something like that. Okay, for sys replication host, um, this table uh, here you can check the IP information that the replication object is using. IP can be used by assigning them in a multiple for each uh, replication type. So IP information uh, that the local and the remote is using are recorded. Okay. Okay. For sys replication item, this is a metal table that can check all the uh, the table information that is included in the replication object. Okay, we can check things like which table is saved into which replication of uh, local and which table is saved in a remote server or something like that. Okay. So now uh, we're going to uh, have a look at the performance view. The metal tables uh, checks the information about the replication objects. Okay. And from performance view, you can check the status of replication in more detail. Okay. First of all, um, the the uh, the one of the view tables that is most used, the retail rep gap, the replication gap, is used when checking how much replication gap is created. Okay, you can also check the replication name. Okay, and the LDP LRSN um, is the S sequential number of log that is um, recorded most recently from the local server. Okay, so when you check the current log file, uh, you can see the log is recorded up to the number that is recorded to lib last n. Okay, the RPSN um, is the most recent X log that is currently sent. Okay, it means the number of X log that the sender has sent most recently. So when expressing the gap, uh, it uses the formula of read last n minus um, RPSN. Okay, I said the replication gap is not the size of data or the number of records. I said it is difference of SN, sequence number. So you can check this number from table called replication gap. Okay. And those two columns are used. Okay. The read log file number is the log file number that the sender is currently reading. Okay. For example, the log file is up to 100 in the log directory. However, when read log file number is equal to 3, then the, even though the checkpoint is executed, the rest of 97 log cannot can never be deleted. Okay. The read the RLP sender is used when checking the current status of sender thread. All right. Um, the sender thread is activated by each object, so you can check the name of the object that the sender belongs to, and you can also check the current SN value of xlog that is currently sending from XN, XSN column. Okay, so XSN we're talking about here um, shows the most recent X uh, number that the sender has sent, so from brittle RP gap. Um, Table the value that is identical to RPSN is recorded. Okay, the comment XSN. Um, this one is the column that can check the comment uh, is executed up to which log. Okay, and for status, you can check the current status of sender thread whether it is started or not. Okay, you can check the IP information. Um, Of the sender and receiver, you can also yeah also check the replication mod mode. Okay, from with the IP receiver, you can check the IP information, but more importantly, you can check the apply uh, XSN. Okay, from this column, you can check the SLOG number that the receiver has received most recently. Okay, so when when replication is stopped, it can use this number to resend the log and synchronize the data gap between servers. Okay, so let's uh, check okay, through the example. When you check the vital RP gap table, uh, you can check the following information. Currently, the replication object is, uh, is called RP1 is created, and the most recent SN value that needs to be replicated is the value of RP SN, RP last SN. Okay, so far the sender could not send some of the contents. So when we uh, 
when we check whether the sender is up to, the sender has sent up to the value of RPS send. All right. Um, so the replication gap is equal to RPS uh, RP loss S N minus RPS send, which is shown in RP gap. Okay, the sender is currently reading the log, log file five two nine. Okay, when we look at the bottom, the log file is up to five four five. Okay, in the log directory. Okay, and it, and it is currently reading the log file five two nine. Okay, so when checkpoint is executed, the log file between 529 to 545 cannot be deleted. Okay, so when we look at the RP sender, um, the XN send value is the X log number that is currently sending. I said this value is same as RP SN from the RP gap. Okay, this one. Currently, the status value is 1, so it is activating as normal and we can check that it is activating by, by lazy time all right um, for from sys replication table we can check the xnsn um, value different to the two tables above okay then what is xsn represent i said this xnsn is the xlog number that the receiver has received okay so when we look at the vital receiver table in next slides Okay, it is same as apply apply xn. So the sender has sent the contents, but the receiver cannot receive up to this number. Okay, so but when replication stop and restart it again, it will restart from this value, so that the data gap will be synchronized. All right. Okay, so it was pretty much about today's web seminar called the replication part five optimization and monitoring. So today we have looked at how to how to optimize auto-based replication depending on the situation. Monitoring process in auto-based replication, description about uh, various monitoring methods and some useful meta tables for, for monitoring. Okay, So uh, now I think we will stop here for today and I hope you guys have a wonderful time for the rest of the day and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you everyone.